What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for an international roundup. We've got quite a few games to get through um, regarding Spurs players on international duty. And we're going to start off with Croatia 5, Latvia 0. Ivan Perisic playing 90 minutes, two assists on the day, five key passes, completing two out of his 13 crosses, three big chances creating, having a shot on the day with three off target, two dribbles out of the five, three out of his 13 ground duels and one aerial duel one. Um, but five key passes and two assists on the day. Brilliant stuff from Ivan. Causing havoc on the left wing uh, um, from uh, on the weekend. And look, he's still got the great crossing ability. We know that. And he does well for Croatia, doesn't he? We um, who had a brilliant World Cup and he's had a really good start to the season. So I'm very happy for Perisic, but there are rumours about him leaving soon. Um, but look, we know he could be a good left winger. We, against teams like Latvia, you give him time and space to get the ball in. He's got quality in his boots. So it's no surprise he managed to pick up two assists. Yeah, and he was playing, obviously, a very similar style that he's playing at Tottenham right now on the left wing, very much uh, tugged high up the pitch, like he did in the uh, in the international tournament just gone as mm. well, the World Cup. So uh, big up to Ivan Perisic. Good performance for him, but it is against Latvia at the end of the day. Next up, Sweden beat Estonia five goals to nil. Kulisevsky playing 90 minutes and grabbing man of the match award in that game. He completed four out of his five dribbles, got a goal, got an assist. 27 out of his 33 passes were accurate. One key pass. Uh, one big chance created and won seven out of his nine duels as well. So a top performance from Kulisevsky, albeit against Estonia. Yeah, looking at his highlights, he looks super confident. Um, he was um, really causing their fullback lots of trouble. Uh, he was involved in a lot of the highlights. Obviously, I didn't watch the game, but he was involved in a lot of the highlights that I saw. Really confident goal as well. Involved, up, involved in the build-up to the goal, passing out wide, then following his run into the penalty area. Really nice touch in the penalty area as well and a really good finish. So hopefully he can take this confidence into the Premier League because it's really good to see. Obviously, people have had a bit of a mixed reaction to his league performances so far this season. I don't think he's been bad. I think he's been pretty good so far. But obviously, we want to see more from him. But hopefully, the more goal contributions he's getting at international level could help translate into Premier League as well. Yep, obviously. Uh, next up is Denmark 1, Finland 0. Hoybier scoring again his second goal on international duty out of two games. One key pass as well. Six out of his seven long balls. One out of his two ground duels. One and 109 passes out of his 113 attempted. So another top performance from Pierre Amahoibi. And he needs to put in these performances as well because he is down the pecking order at Spurs and he needs to do something to fight his way back into that team. I believe he got man of the match as well, uh, which is uh, very, uh, very nice for him. Really nice goal as well. 86th minute. Um, the game's a nil-nil. Edge of the box, just takes one touch and arrows it into the far corner. Really, with very, very little backlift as well. Very impressive from Pierre. And I feel like Postacoglu maybe needs to learn this, but I reckon he should be swapping Skip and Hoybier's position. I think, because um, at the moment he plays Skip in the eight and he plays Hoybier in the six. I think he needs to swap it around, play Hoybier in the eight, play Skip in the six. And because Hoybier is just much more of a goal threat than Skippy. And I think he's more comfortable in that area when he's a bit more box to box, box to box as well. Obviously two two nice finishes on the international break for him. Very happy for him. Hopefully he can carry on, um, carry his form into the Premier League. But He's uh, showing, even last season, what well, he got five goals. And he's showing um, in the last couple of games, he's still got that little touch in front of goal. Yeah, absolutely. So I completely agree with what you're saying in terms of the six and the eight, to be honest. I think it's not so much I think Skip is more suited to the six, which I think he is more of a six, but I'm not sure about him in the six in the Postacoglu system. But what I do think is that Hoybier is definitely better in the eight and especially going forward as well and what, what he can provide for us. And you saw last season, he had his best season ever for goal contributions. I think it was at five goals and four assists or something like that. So, um, yeah, I think Hoybier definitely does need to be deployed more as an eight than a six in this system. Let's talk about England next. They drew 1-1 one, one with Ukraine out in Poland. James Madison completing 65 minutes on the day. One key pass, one of his crosses um, accurate. Two out of his two long balls um, accurate as well. And he did three successful ground draws out of five. But I don't think it was the greatest display by James Madison. But I don't think he was helped too much by Gareth Southgate on the day. Yeah, why is he playing him left wing? You've got James Madison, who's been unbelievable in central midfield um, at the start of the season. In a 4-3-3 as well. In played a 4-3-3 against Ukraine. And yet he's starting Madison out on, on the left wing, which he's never really been unbelievable in that position. He's, he's kind of filled in for Leicester in, on the wing um, at times 
times and he's done a fairly good job but his best position is central mid midfield i don't know why he's crowbarring in jordan henderson when you've got madison there as a midfielder you've got so you've got wingers on the bench like rashford and um you've got you've got a lot of talent on the bench as well so i don't understand why he's overcomplicating it. you're playing ukraine yes they're a good team don't get me wrong but they're not a team that we shouldn't be favourites for. Like we, you should be able to play a lot of attacking players and, and with the quality that we have, be able to overawe um, uh, Ukraine with our attacking talent. So I think he just overcomplicated it. Just play Madison in the centre, play Rashford on the left, and then you got a, then you got a nice, nicely balanced team. At the moment, it was just unbalanced, I felt. What has, James Hend what has Henderson done, Jordan Henderson done, to, to get into the team? Like, I don't understand. He's gone out to Saudi. He must be playing unbelievable in Saudi yeah, he Arabia. Must be. Must be. <laughs> yeah, he must I'm be just playing. like, surely we can move on from Henderson now as, as a nation. 100%. Well, I don't understand. We've got Rice there, who's really taking on the mantle as our best centre mid. Bellingham is killing it for uh, Madrid. So it's not like Pen you need someone to hold their hands. You know what I mean? I understand if there were young players who maybe with little experience, maybe you want the cool head of Henderson to kind of manage them through the game. But these are experienced international players now. They've ha Like, Bellingham has all the pressure on him in Madrid and he's, and he's dealing with it. Flourishing. Like flourishing. So you don't need a Henderson there next to him. Just put a Madison there and then you've got the good balance, you've got the quality, and then you can add Rashford there. So I don't like and also it led to a it wasn't just like, Madison didn't have a great game, but England were just atrocious. I'm sorry. It's the most boring game of and how can you have the talent that England have and play the football we do? And we and this isn't the first time we've said it. Yes, when we get to tournaments, we beat Iran 6-1 and we have some good games. But I'm sorry, more often than not this team is just not up to the standard of where we should be with the quality that we have. And I know Southgate has done a brilliant job with England, don't get me wrong. But I think I feel, I, I, times like this where I just feel like he's taken us as far as he can. But you know, these times happen way too often and then we get into tournaments and we get to finals and semi-finals. Um, I kind of feel like with the team that we have now and with the squad, we should be going and winning tournaments. 100%. And I think we've got, we've got the best if not one of the best squads in in european football in at international level no doubt about it you're looking at germany right now i think we've got a much better squad than them you're looking at spain i think we've got a better squad than them you're looking at the only one i think that could potentially have a better squad than us is france yeah. i think apart from that we've got the best squad in europe yeah so i agree there's no reason why these kind of semi-finals and finals should be still be looked at as like the amazing job that southgate is doing yes he's done well and he's done like the kind of job where the best international manager to get to these lit stages probably in our lifetime since 66 but we should be going further than what we're doing now and we, also, we've been at that stage for too long also he's been in the job for how long now uh five years yeah like are things improving i don't see them improving like are things getting better like he got us to the euro final great but since the euro final have things improved since then like not really the performances haven't been as good in my opinion yeah and i look with the players that we have we should be playing free-flowing attacking football um we've got amazing players as well like J bellingham right looking at bellingham in this ukraine game we were, go we were it was 1-1 and we were pushing for the win we had to go and get the win and what happens he takes off bellingham keeps henderson on the pitch it makes no sense whatsoever bellingham is coming up clutch every single game for real madrid at the moment scoring last minute winners like, why take him off? Yeah, I don't understand it. I'm getting a bit frustrated with, with South getting the football we're playing. Um, but look. And Harry um, Maguire, how's he still Yeah, getting? Maguire's still there. <laughs> I don't, yeah, he's just playing the players that he trusts and he knows. And I don't think, I just don't think that's necessary right now with the talent that he's leaving out. Yeah. All right, let's move on. And by the way, Carl Walker getting his first ever England goal as well, which is crazy to think about. His first ever one? First wow. ever goal. You know, I think nice 71 goal. or 72 uh, appearances. Lovely ball from Harry Kane, wasn't it? And Carl Walker just takes it into his stride and finishes it off. Um, next up, though, let's talk about Brazil 5, Bolivia 1. Richarlison played 71 minutes, only 15 touches um, in 71 minutes. Two shots on target, two big chances missed. And one of these chances was proper uh, guilt edge chance. Did really well to create the space for mm. himself, to be fair, but completely just smashed the ball over the bar. And there's images of Richarlison uh, crying on the sidelines after a poor performance from him. And that just didn't sit right with me. Like being on the bench while Brazil were absolutely battering Bolivia, 5 1, the game finished. And he's sitting there crying on the sidelines. I mean, that is not no mentality for a top. Uh, football player to have number nine for Brazil you know Tottenham's only recognized proper striker as well it's just like you need to be conducting yourself in a better manner than that man yeah it seems to be something we're saying a lot like with his misses um uh, like he does well to make the opportunity but then the finishing touches off and who else did we say that about Bobby uh, Soldado Bobby Soldado yeah maybe maybe it's another Soldado situation but 
It's hard to know in terms of how, in terms of that image that's circling, uh, circulating around with Richarlison. I haven't actually seen a video of it. Obviously, there's an image there, but I haven't obviously seen like a video of him being inconsolable on the, on the touchline. But he doesn't obviously look very happy in that image. And when your team are five one up and they're balling, and I know everyone else has got on the score sheet but yourself, I feel like he's just making it all about himself, and mm. that's not the mentality that you sh you need or want in in a team. You you sh he should be happy that he's part of the team playing well and that. And that the team are doing a really good job, you know, scoring lots of goals. And yes, you should be disappointed in yourself that you haven't gotten the score sheet, and maybe you're not happy with your performance level. But you shouldn't be outwardly projecting negativity after a five-one victory for your team. You should be celebrating with your teammates. And then the next day, once training comes back, then you should be working twice as hard to to get back to your regular level. But at the moment. I don't like that mentality of being being like that. Um, people say, well, he should be disappointed himself, but I don't like that mentality from players who, 100%. when the team's playing well and winning. 100%. No two ways about it, he should be disappointed in himself, but he should be showing it and channeling it in, in different ways completely. And if you get taken off, yeah, you can be fuming to get taken off and everything like that. And I don't even mind the signs of, of showing, um, you know, your your anger of being taken off but the way you deal with it is you don't go and sulk on the sidelines you go and work doubly as hard to try get back into that team and start scoring goals again you don't go and sulk and cry on the sidelines that is no mentality for a top football player to have yeah let's move on and let's talk about Mali 4 Sudan nil and an AFCON qualifier Bisuma didn't start the game as Mali were already through and playing the kind of whipping boys of the group but he came on for the last 28 minutes he grabbed himself an assist one successful long ball out of the two one big chance created two shots three out of his six dribbles and he won four of his seven ground jewels as well so really good display from Bisuma coming off the bench and that assist oh, oh my days what an assist you won't see you won't find a better assist um in a very long time the guy absolutely destroyed the whole of the sudan defense completely destroyed the uh, goalkeeper as well and uh, laid it on perfectly for another mali attacker to go and score the goal but i was in awe i've watched that about a thousand times now since <laughs> still does now how he does in such a tight space as well such amazing close control to keep it away from the keeper yet still keep it in play because he's yeah. right on the touchline as well incredible piece of skill i said it was like watching ronaldinho in defensive mid the other day and and uh, everyone was laughing at me but look who's laughing now with his ronaldinho <laughs> piece of skill on the side on the touchline unbelievable from basuma and i'm glad that he didn't start and he only got 20 minutes and still came on and contributed as well just shows the confidence that he's in and i'm glad he got a little bit of a rest as well didn't have to play the majority of the game so very very good and i would love to see that kind of assist in the premier league for basuma only absolutely. thing that's missing at the moment yeah, probably for his performances absolutely but let's move on let's talk about romania one israel one in a really important game actually in this group for the euro qualifiers um it was very important for israel not to lose if they wanted to qualify manuel solomon did play 90 minutes he made uh, five of his seven dribbles, one key passes, 12 out of 21 ground jewels and four tackles made on the day, which was quite an impressive defensive display from Manuel Solomon. Uh, Israel equalising with about 15 minutes to go to avoid mm. defeat out in Romania. Yeah, Oscar Gluck with a lovely goal with his mm. left foot showing uh, that he's one of the top talents at the moment. Was, we were but linked with him in the summer. We weren't were, we? yeah. I think it was he Leipzig now or Salzburg. Salzburg, Salzburg yeah. Um, but I, was, I saw uh, Manuel Solomon's individual highlights. He seemed to have a very tidy game. Um, very unlucky in the latter stage as well not to get an assist because he played a lovely through ball I think to Oscar Gluck again and Gluck was unlucky no, not to score the winner um was giving the fullbacks a bit of a torrid time with his with his dribbling ability as well. Seemed to really step up in those moments, and it was a big result for Israel as well, not to lose away from home to Romania. And I think they're one point behind them now with a few games left. So all to play for in that group. But fair play to Solomon. Not an easy game. Romania away, and they and Israel and him have done very well to get a point. Yeah, one of the hardest games for them in the group, that's for sure. And we're going to finish off talking about Ireland 1, Netherlands 2. I think it was at the Aviva. Van de Ven, uh, we brought you the news that in the first game he was called up for, but was not, was not uh, didn't even get called up to the subs bench. Well, he got the upgrade this time because he was an unused sub um, in the game out in Ireland. So uh, that can, I guess, Van de Ven come back early because that's the, the Netherlands are done now. Uh, oh, fantastic. Break, and he so, didn't play at all. Yeah, oh, that's great Not news. even one minute. Oh, so. I'm, I'm very relieved. I'm, I'm very happy. As much as I'm happy for him to be called up and deserves recognition for his good performances, we need him. 
And I don't care if the manager doesn't rate him at all or thinks he's terrible. I don't care. We need Van de Ven in our team because we've got no one else right now. So I'm happy. Yeah, there were, was a scare that Romero was injured, but that seems to be um, false. And he was in training and stuff like that. And they're going to play Bolivia away, which is like the lowest altitude uh, game that you can have in the world. And each player have been uh, given their own like oxygen canister uh, to feed off from during the game because they'll be in such... Uh, high or low altitudes i'm not sure which one but um, i just hope he's all right i hope he'll be fine yeah so let's just hope like they can avoid any sort of injury coming back for tottenham because that scare was a massive scare for us and if he's mm. injured for any amount of time with arsenal and liverpool just around the corner we could be in deep trouble 100 percent. but look that is your international roundup let me know your take on the international players so far there's still a few more international games over the next couple of days which will give you the reaction to on those ones but thank you everyone for joining us today like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on, on you spurs, spurs.